Thank you very much for this opportunity. Majority of the work was done when I was working in UK and I got the data when I recently was operating in UK in August. This is a typical scenario that I've been facing for the last 14 months when I've come to India. So a 55 year old fit gentleman who has got the three risk factors. He has got a T2C disease, PSA is 20 and a bulky disease. Not high grade Gleason, but Gleason three plus four. And what do you do? The standard in, at least in Hyderabad is hormone manipulation plus EBRT. Biochemical recurrence, the moment you stop the hormone manipulation and then they go for high dose brachytherapy. Patient recurs, castrate resistant prostate cancer, then PSA recurrence and metastasis. And then comes the final year of his life. This is where the major difference between surgery and radiotherapy is. If you look at this gentleman, he had eight admissions, the standard that you would expect. He would have uretic obstruction, that you would put in a frostomy tube in, he would have hematuria, he would have incontinence. I'm not going to say that by doing surgery, we might alter the natural history dramatically, but one thing for sure, he would not die a miserable death. Have an acceptable definition for high-risk prostate cancer. There are eight, but I'll go for the common ones that I used. So we use the three factors, the PSA, the Gleason score, and the clinical stage. The common one is high risk is PSA more than 20, Gleason 8 to 10, and more than or equal to T2C. The overall cohort is 575 patients who were operated but had the full data set for 528. So the cohort that I'm going to present going further on is 528. The low risk cohort, there were about a third of the overall 500 page, 528 patients who were low risk. And if you look at the numbers, there was no difference with respect to the surgery. RALP time was around two hours and 25 minutes. Consult time, 170 minutes. That was for the whole PLND whenever it was done. And then when you look at the T3A rate, that is extra capsular presence on the pathological staging. So these are for low risk cancer patients, around a third of them will have, not a third, a quarter of them will have extra capsular disease. Not much of high grade Gleason, but a quarter of them will have extra capsular disease. Tumor volume, three cc, and overall prostate volume was 54 and the margin positive rate was 17.4%. When we look at the intermediate one, we call them intermediate because we don't know where they fit in, whether they are low or high. And that's how the numbers indicate. So the PSA is seven. Operative, no, not much of a difference. But the T3A rate, the extra capsula, if you imagine these were all T2Bs, intermediate is T2B, clinical staging T2B, 47% of them had extra capsula disease or 53%, so if you include T3A and T3B, 53% of intermediate cancers have extra capsular disease. Tumor volume increases from three to five cc, and margin positive rate is 18.5. The last question, the question that I wanted to answer. High risk disease, around a third of the patients. Again, not much of a difference, but the um, number of patients who had PLND was 60% in the high risk cohort. T3A and T3B, so overall 70% of the patients would have extra capsular disease or lymph node positive disease or around a third of patients will have organ confined curable disease. I'll reiterate again, around a third of high risk prostate cancer patients will have organ confined disease. Tumor volume increases to eight and margin positive rate is around 30%. And when we compare all the three, there was statistical difference once we go down below Gleason 7 between high, low, and intermediate. So RALP time, not much of a difference. Gleason 7 or more does increase with high-risk disease. And tumor volume, 3, 5, and 8 cc. And these are the numbers. So around a quarter of low-risk prostate cancer patients will have non-organ confined disease. 50% of intermediate risk probably have high-risk disease and around 30%, one in three patients of high-risk disease have organ-confined cancer. 
then using the DMECO, which it was meant to be used for, which is prognost which is the long-term outcomes following radical prostatectomy. This is the Mayo Clinic validation of the DMECO. And the key thing here is for the high risk, which is the lowermost one, what that shows is 55% of high risk prostate cancer patients are cured by single modality at 10 years. So 55% of high risk are cured by surgery at 10 years. The second is this one, which is more than 90% of high risk prostate cancer patients never have lower urinary tract obstruction symptoms. Hematuria, no. Uretic obstruction, no. None of those problems that you associate with recurrent metastatic prostate cancer, especially with respect to the lower inner tract, you don't have them following surgery. Conclusions, a quarter of low risk have non-organ confined cancer. A proportion of high grade cancer is there. A third of high risk prostate cancer patients have organ confined cancer. A third of high risk have margin positive disease. Thank you very much.